Hey everybody, it's Joel from the Board Game Mechanics. Today I'm taking a look at Australia from Stronghold Games. So Australia from Stronghold Games. This is uh, the, the latest in their Great Designers series, which is uh, a series that I really personally love. It includes games like Kanban, Great Western Trail, Craft Wagon, maybe a little lesser known in that series, but a very good game. Um, they basically have these great offerings from these great designers. Uh, Rosenberg has Cottage Garden in there. All these different games in this Great Designer series are really great games. Um, and I think this one is right in line with the rest of them. It's a great game as well. Uh, I'll give you more thoughts on that though, but first let's go to the table and take a look at how this plays. Uh, this isn't really a rules explanation as much as it is a rules overview. So if you want to find a place to, to figure out how to play this game, uh, maybe go and find that uh, somewhere else. There are a couple of really good tutorials out there. So, uh, but this is an overview. I want you guys to have a sense of this game before I really talk about it. So anyway, uh, that's enough. And I guess I will I will say this too. I was a little bit sick when I was recording the overview here. So uh, I am sniffing a little bit. I am a little under the weather when I talk about it. But I feel like uh, you're going to get a pretty good sense of the game overall, um, regardless of that. So uh, I guess I'll just cut to the table now. I'm shooting this video what I call Rado style. So it's going to be a little shaky. I'm sorry about that. But I want to be able to show all the different parts of the board. So this is a more or less completed game. My son started picking up his parts. Um, but mine, this is how I finished the game. And we got creamed. Um, this time because there were just some unrevealed monsters that were worth a ton of points um, But there's basically a few parts to this game I'm gonna start off with the actions you can take and then we'll explain how those kind of look so the actions you can take You know them by putting cubes on there and you can see how some of these have multiple cubes on them And I'll talk about that here in a second But this one just says you can put down two train tracks, but you can't put them in train That's like green colored which are the hills. Okay, this one says you can put down train tracks but you can also put them down in the hill lands, the hilly areas, okay? And then and then these say you can mine resources that you find in your network of train tracks. This one, this action says take one of these cards that you see up here, which are like kind of like just helper cards, like people you're recruiting to your commune that can help you out. This says develop farms, which is where you get a lot of points at and you get some gold from those as well. Um, this is saying buy military units. This is a market action, so if you aren't able to balance resources real well, you can spend a little time to switch your resources out. And then you can attack, and then finally re retrieve all your cubes back. So the way how these cubes work, though, is if there's a cube there already, you can still take that action. But you have to pay one gold for each cube that's there, so I'd have to pay one gold for that. If I wanted to build farms again, I'd have to pay three gold to do that. So that'd be a really expensive action. So that's why you want to take this action up here of removing the cubes. So I'd remove them all back. If I wanted to do that and then I can start over fresh but that takes time so this little like crest down here shows how much time it takes for you to do things so this has got a really cool time mechanism which the way how that works is like it basically determines your player order and things like that based on the amount of time you have so um, if we look here at this time track I'm gonna get a yellow player out too so let's say yellow player took something that took one that would never happen because they only go up one at a time so if we're past the purple, it goes until it catches up with us. So it would go, and then it would go, and it does different things when it hits different spots in the track. But then it would be yellow's turn. So then yellow would take an action that, you know, would take three time or something. And so he goes up three time. And then now it would be purple's turn again, because purple's the last player, and it was on the top of the stack that was the, in the last place there. Then it would be, you know, green's turn again. And actually, I'm showing you this because, like, right here is showing where the end of the game is happening at. So once you hit 53, you're done. And then once everybody hits 53... Well, this would actually be here because, you know, that's where it would stop at. But once you, everyone's past that 53 or on that 53, the game's over. So um, those are the different actions you can take. They all take different amounts of time. And this is what my network looks like when I get done here. So I had train tracks around that were able to connect different hexes. And those hexes each produce different resources, um, which basically is a little bit abstract because it just turns into gold, essentially. But it is a way to get some gold. And then the other part of the game that's really important is this. Sorry, that's so shaky. Are these are these ancient ones that pop up? So they they start off this way, and then as you reveal them, they flip over, and they have a strength and a points. So this guy's really strong, not worth that many points. 
um, over here, he's really, really strong and not worth, he's worth quite a few points actually. So there's different stacks of these that have increasing difficulties. So one of the genius things of this design is the way how you randomize the game is you put these little tiles out like this at the beginning of the game. And then it says, hey, relative to, you put them where these triangles are at on the board. So there's a triangle right here. So I put this here. Relative to this, once I make it face north, this would get three coal up here, right? And then this would get an ancient old one here. This would get three iron. And this would get an ancient old one too. And so these numbers in the hex tile right here, those show you which stack you take them from. So the way how it works is we start on the coast. We're, we're starting developing on the coast here of Australia. And as we get further inland, the stuff gets stronger and stronger. So it's got a kind of a cool ramping up feature that it does. Um, so that's really neat about this game as well. These cards really are neat too. Um, this is something that can be ignored when you play, but it really shouldn't. I mean, because they give you really good powers. So this guy right here, for one example, um, one time during combat, you can remove one of your damage from one of your units, which the way how combat works is really kind of a cool little push your luck game. So the mini game for combat in this is really neat as well. Another strong point of this game. So I'm just going to go over combat real fast here for you, okay? So let's just say, here are the different kinds of ancient old ones that we can have. So let's say that I was going to do some combat against, uh, let's just randomly draw one here. Let's see I was going to do some combat against him, okay? Against that flying bug skeleton dude. So I'm going to flip cards. And let's just say that these are the cards I'm flipping. I'm going to flip cards and it's going to have, they're going to resolve a certain way. So this one says that if you had artillery in the fight, it would do a damage to him. However, he's going to do a damage back to one of your ground units. So there's two kinds of damage it can do. There's airship damage, and then there's also the ground unit damage. So I'd put a damage counter on one of my units because he did one damage to me. I'd put a damage counter on him because I did one damage to him if I had that kind of unit in the fight. We keep going. Oh, look, now it caused a sanity for me to lose. So I only have so much sanity in my in my units. Once they go insane, I have to, I have to withdraw and I have to stop the fight. Um, one of the cool powers that you can get is you get extra sanity because you have, like, uh, Count Jago is his name, and he lets you put another sanity into your military so you can fight a little longer. But then if there's an armored car in that fight, the armored car is going to hit back and do one damage to them. Well, let's look at a couple more of these. Another sanity, another armored car on him. And then there would be an infantry, but another sanity damage. So that guy caused a lot of sanity damage. So that's kind of how the combat works. The other piece, too, is that we have these, like, encounter decks here. So this encounter deck that we have, there's numbers on the back of there. So they happen in different phases of the game. So we start off with the ones, then go to the twos and the threes. So the ones tend to be a little bit easier on you. So just, just reveal the lowest hex beast. And so there's numbers on all these hex. You can see that. So it starts off at the bottom towards the edge of the coast. And then as it goes through the game, they reveal game, things that are further and further back. So that's another way how that clever numbering system and ramping up system works. But then as you get to the threes, these cards get really nasty. Assassinate a couple of the guys that are face up. Um, and then there's one I really want you to see here. This one. Place and draw a level three old one tile on each revealed temple. So these temples don't give you a lot of rewards, but they, they show up in the game. And they uh, when they show up in the game, they, they kick your butt pretty hard because they can spawn out new guys. And this is the other one, too, that I think you should note, too. Reveal the old one in the lowest hex. And then draw cards equal for its movement, or draw six cards for its movement. So it's going to be like you flip a, text, uh, a tile, and then since it's probably pretty far away because it happens in phase three, it's going to move six times. So if you're not fighting monsters early in the game, stuff will be pretty close to you, and it's going to get six cards flipped. So it may move up to six hexes. And when a, he when a monster goes into a hex, see how I have those cracked land uh, little icon or little discs there? Those are farms that monsters got to, and they just demolished them. And actually, I got a card that let me flip a couple of those back over and, and revitalize my farms. But I had like a ton of my farms demolished, and those are a lot of points. So um, honestly, it's just a really cool game of balancing, fighting the bad dudes, getting resources so you can build more train tracks, and, and then, uh, you know, putting out farms to get more points and get more resources. A really neat game. It's actually pretty simple. Once you get going with it, there's only so many actions you can take, and it just makes a lot of sense. Really a beautiful game. And the other thing, too, I'm going to say this. Sometimes Stronghold Games gets dogged for putting out games without great components. Like, I'm thinking of Terraforming Mars in particular. Look at that player board. I don't know if you can see the thickness on that, but this is, like, full. Like, you don't see player boards like that anymore. The cards are really nice. The art's really great. Everything in this game is awesome. 
Um, so I'm going to give you some final thoughts on that here back in the studio now. So that is the overview of the game. Um, so let's let's look at like let's get right down to it. This game, um, I, I want you to keep watching, so I don't want to tell you that it's awesome right now, and then have you guys like be like, "Oh, Kratzer said it's awesome." I, okay, cool, I'm done. Um, because it is awesome. It's a really great game. I love Martin Wallace. Absolutely love him. He has become one of my favorite designers this year. Um, I have been playing Brass. I played London. Uh, this game by a Nebula. I mean, just so many really cool games by Martin Wallace. And this one is, I guess it's in the uh, Study in Emerald universe, kind of, or a continuation of Spiritual Successor. I've not played a Study in Emerald. Um, I have a copy that is is getting ready to be played, but I have not played it. And I'm excited to play it because this game made me even more hyped for what Martin Wallace is able to do when he designs a game. So I do love this game. It is a great game. Um absolutely just love it so i think one thing i didn't explain super well in that overview was that that purple disc i put a note in there but the purple disc is kind of like a timeline marker and it doesn't start until you get to about like around the 20 second time unit and then it starts to follow you guys and that's when it's like an automa almost that just keeps having things happen on the board um but it's done in such a slick way that's awesome so um i've played other games where you have an automa that is like hey we're gonna make things happen to make a cooperative kind of thing almost go on or or whatever like um i'm thinking of like you know eldritch and, and uh, arkham horror and and i mean like i don't know it's you get a lot of the richness of those of those decks of cards with very little fiddliness in this one so i think he did an excellent job with that so um that is one thing i want to make sure you guys understand that you are playing against these cthulhu monsters and zombies and things so the uh the theme of this game is really fun. Um, it's like the, Australia is like kind of our last bastion of, of hope for humanity. It seems like the rest of the world's been decimated. We just found Australia. It's hope for us. We have hope that we can establish um, farms and settle this land and try and fight back against these these beasts that have taken over, you know, the rest of the world. And um, it's set in the 1930s, which is a really cool time period. We were really like developing technology, but things were still pretty coarse and rough. Locomotives, engines, uh, like like trains were still super powerful and super needed uh, for us to develop. So the train thing definitely works. Um, it's a very neat overall theme and universe kind of thing, um, but a little different than what you'd expect out of a train game. So uh, I guess really I want to just say this. I When you play Martin Wallace games, Sometimes you think of them as being like very much economic, route buildy, um, kind of dry games. This one to me feels so different than the rest of them uh, that I've played. Um, it's just a really different game because it really is. It's like you're playing an 18, 18xx game or or something, and then all of a sudden, like you throw in a, a bit of Arkham Horror or something in there where you're going to have combat and fighting. And I don't know, it just feels really neat. It feels like you really are trying to establish a colony and build something. And then like there's an urgency with what you build, not just to make money, but to survive. So it, it makes the train games and economic games more exciting. It could be a really awesome gateway for people who are like Ameritrash players to get into like some of the networking and economic games out there. So Anyway, I really do enjoy this game a lot. Let's get into some specifics here on on uh, why this game to me is is something that I really enjoyed. Um, I'm going to say, first off, it has a unique hybrid of that Euro and Ameritrash type thing going on. Um, I kind of hinted at that earlier. We definitely are doing Euro things. We're, we're building a train network. We're building this uh, set of like farms and going and mining and having a home base. And we're definitely doing that, having a port. Um, you feel that for sure, but then you also feel that there's this pressure of these monsters that are encroaching on you and that are going to like potentially destroy everything you've built. So it almost feels a little bit like you're playing like one of the old like Command and Conquer or um, like uh, StarCraft games that you're building a base and there's like an AI that's going to come fight you. And so it's got that neat feel to it. That's a hybrid between a building real like mental economics type thing and then that like encounter thing that you really love in ameritrash thrash uh kind of games so i really do like that it's present in this game it's a cool thing for sure 100 percent for sure that is that is very present very well like felt in this game um so the next thing i'm going to say is this sometimes stronghold games unfairly i think gets bashed for bad components um and that's not because of I, I mean like i think a lot of times stronghold is offering games in the united states that have been 
designed and the the publishing and everything like that has been figured out previously. So I don't know that they always have a say in that. Um, but at any rate, I mean, like Terraforming Mars, those player boards are probably worthy of some criticism and the components overall um, aren't the best in that game, but that's a, a phenomenal game. But the components, I don't think anyone's ever said, man, these components in the box as they are, are just great. This one, they will say that. This game is amazing. So I don't know if that was... Uh, they, they decided that, you know what, we're going to hear what the fan base has said and up our component game a little bit on this one, or if it just uh, the company that they were working with development on um, ended up having some just really great stuff component-wise that they were working on. But the player boards, I showed you in that video, the player boards like that don't exist anymore. I mean, you just, you don't see player boards like that ever, at all, ever. It just is really, really cool um, that those thick player boards are there. And then, and then like the tiles are great. Um, everything in that game is just really great. And then I think they could have just put cubes in there, you know, different colors of wood cubes in there and it would have been fine. But I think by putting in the different types of like plastic, uh, like lumps of, of, you know, coal and, or I guess, uh, the different just elements in there, um, putting in the iron, putting in the, 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 I guess the phosphates that are bigger to make you understand that they're going to be victory points for you. Uh, the gold, um, just different stuff like that. I think it really adds to the game too, that you have these components that look distinguishable and different on the board. So um, I think that just helps to simplify the game and the components do add to the overall experience of this game. Um, definitely do not take away from it and they definitely do add to it. The card art, everything on this game is just awesome component wise. I mean, there's there's no component in this game that I go, ah, why'd they do that? Like I would, if I had... <laughs> if I had unlimited, you know, like resources to say, I'm going to design a game and put the components I want in this game. These are the components I would have in there. I, I don't think there's a thing in this game that I would replace um, or needs upgraded in, in like even your, my wildest imaginations. So this game has that cool thing too, of the, the player mat has the thing of where you put the cubes down and that's really easy for people to pick up. Like, I think people can understand that I'm going to put a, a, a cube onto one of these spots and then do it. And then once you explain what those spots do, they aren't complicated. The pictures really do help people understand what you're doing when you go there. Um, and then the cubes are just a good universal component too, that you can keep track of damage with them as you're fighting things. But I mean, like they're just a nice little component. They help keep things straight in your mind. But then it also, those cubes do play such a critical, critical part in like how you're going to keep track of um, like where you've gone and how much it costs you to do things. So it's critical to the core mechanics of this game. So I think that's really cool and it makes it really easy to understand. I mean, like, I think that this is one of those games that for you to run a settlement and play it, you could be sitting down playing this game in five to 10 minutes of just a rules explanation very quick. And then one person could understand better how the movement of the monsters works or how the combat works and explain that as that gets unfolded in the game. So like there's definitely that phase in the beginning of the game where you're just building and the monsters haven't activated yet and nothing's happening except for you're, you're building your own little economic area there. That phase you can explain super quickly. And then once the monsters start to get involved, bring that out later. So I think it's really easy to explain this game, very logical to explain this game. And then I also feel like, um, this is one that it unfolds differently because it's so randomized every time. It unfolds differently. It plays at different player counts very differently. Um, it's just a neat game. I think on repeated plays, there's a lot to pick up and, and grab on this one. So this is one that I feel like you're going to get a lot of play out of. And then I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I really hope that this might get an expansion at some point. I, I don't know what they would add to it, honestly, because it's pretty well complete, but I mean, like, I think this is one that if they added other encounter cards or more cards to that drafting deck, even it could get even more life out of it. And I hope for that because I think this one's going to be a game that I play a lot. This is going to be one that when people ask me what I want to play, I'm going to say, let's play Australia because it's a really cool one, especially with a group that does like those kind of more encountery combat -y type games because it just does it well. It does the combat stuff well. And it does the the building up your army, building up your base thing really well. So I personally am going to play this game a ton. Um, I just, I don't know. That's I guess that's high praise in itself that I love this game itself enough that like with me getting reviews that I have to do and, and me having stuff on the shelf that I want to play to have more exposure to it. Um, to say that this is one that's going to be like one that I'm going to go to repeatedly is pretty high praise. Um it's not only a, a stay, stay on the shelf, but it's going to come off the shelf and be played a lot kind of game. So um, 
there definitely is a, a deep um, like layer there that you can just keep digging down and you're going to get better as you keep playing it. So definitely will be repeatedly played a ton. Um, the, the, the final pro that I have is that this is a better approach to the Cthulhu stuff. It's uh, a, an interesting, fun way to look at it in a different way. Um, I think that if I had to put a con, I didn't really have a, a glaring con for this game. Um, if I had a con, though, it would be that this theme of the zombies and the Cthulhu is kind of noise now. I mean, there's a lot of it out there, but this one does it well, I think. This one does it in a way that's really fun and addresses the, the content and kind of does it in a way that's different than uh, we're detectives walking around trying to solve this mystery of these nasty beasts that are happening. Um, or like a zombie game where it's just like, hey, survive, because zombies are just everywhere and you need to find shotguns and blow them up. Um, I think that this game does it in a more meta way that you're trying to be like a, a political leader maybe or a colony leader that's stepping back and saying, I'm not going to worry about the specifics of combat um, in, in particular instances, but I'm going to supply you with an army and hope that it does the right things. So um, I don't know. I think overall it does a really good job with the content, the Cthulhu and zombie thing. Probably probably one of the most fresh approaches I've seen to it in a while. Um, if I, if there's a con, it's that it is a Cthulhu and zombie game. But I don't think it's bad in this one. I think that this is uh, this one does does okay with with that content. So um, so that's that's where I'm at with that. I don't really have a glaring con beyond that. Honestly, I, I think the components, like I said, are great. I mean, just everything in this game is great. It's fun. That's another big part of this game. It's just it's just fun. It's a fun game to play. So if you're on the fence on this one, I would say. Man, give it a really hard look. So I, this is where it comes down to, right? These these wrench ratings, where uh, you guys want to know if we've we've uh, decided to make this game an accepted game or not. So where's this one at? Well, I think you can kind of tell it's going to be accepted, but how highly accepted is it going to be at? Um, this is one that I put at a four point five, and this is one where I like I was like, do I want to bring in quarter point measurements on this? Because if I wanted to bring in quarter point measurements, I would probably give this one the four seven five. I didn't quite feel strongly enough that this is a five out of five game. I mean, like I'm, I'm five out of five games are like just pure masterpiece games. Like in the great designer series, a five out of five game is Kanban. Um, a five out of five game is, is, is Lisboa. Um, actually another one that's a five out of five game in the great designer series is great Western trail. So, um, it's not all Vidal Lacerda games that are five out of five, but this is a really high mark for this game, a 4.5 out of five. When I give a game a 4.5 out of five and say it's accepted, this is a game that I say that if you're a hobbyist board gamer and you have a collection of board games, 75% of people under that description would benefit from owning this game and enjoy it, I think. Um, unless there's something that's just glaringly bad about the theme to you or about the mechanics or something like that, I think that this is one that you should take a risk on and go out and check it out, get a chance to play it. Maybe I, you know, I mean, like it's your money, it's your decision, but I would say this is one that I wouldn't hesitate to blind by if, if, uh, if I, if I had to say, I would say this is one that's worth going out and trying to find. So, um, Australia, Martin Wallace, one of my favorite designers, uh, just really am enjoying his stuff. And this one is no exception, a really excellent game. Really love it. Giving it the 4.5 out of five and it's board game is ex mechanics accepted. Thanks for watching. Uh, I do enjoy your support. If you like this video, then there's going to be some cards that pop up. One of them is going to say subscribe to our channel. I do this with another guy named Jason. Jason does a lot more videos than I do. He is just constantly making good videos out there. Um, he's covering stuff that's on Kickstarter or coming to Kickstarter. Does a lot of previews. Um, I do more stuff that's out. I do more stuff that's a little more mainstream. Um, but I think that makes us a good pairing. So if you want to see a combination of those two things, maybe sub to us. The other thing too is you're going to see another card pop up that's like a playlist of like my specific videos. So if you want to see what other things I've done, you can go that direction with it. So uh, thanks for watching though. I really appreciate it. And man, mash that sub button because we love getting more subs. It's just awesome for us to be able to reach more people. And then the, the board game community at large likes us better and wants us to do more things for them. And we get more opportunities to help uh, spread the word on games like this one. So I really do appreciate it. And, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, keep gaming. And I've been Joel.